Over the years, me and my fishing buddies shifted our focus towards bigger lakes, bigger lures, with the main objective, catching bigger fish, especially pike. Deep lakes, remote locations, and a lot of gear and preparation is required for this specific style of fishing. Go big or go home, some might say. But I would like to keep an eye on what it will eventually cost you too. Don't lose the joy in fishing due to being hyper-focused on these die-hard fishing locations. Keep track on having fun, and sometimes the fun in fishing can be found in something completely different. Often a lot of water systems are simply forgotten, as trends evolve and the style of fishing change over time. I don't think I will ever stop chasing big pike, but I did renew my love for the smaller, more basic style of fishing. Back to basic, back to those forgotten waters. Good morning guys! Today we're gonna do something completely different, which is uh, some urban fishing in one of the towns that we used to fish back in the days. Um, now in this era of big boats and fishing out on big lakes with gigantic lures, which were completely unthinkable 10 or even 15 years ago. We are now fishing in uh, well, as urban as you can get in the Netherlands. Small little canals and streams places that uh, I think are quite forgotten when it comes to pike fishing. Um, it's winter, it's cold. These places are usually quite inaccessible to fish because there's a lot of vegetation in the water during the warmer months. But now it's cold. We got some gloves on, we got some proper warm clothing with multiple layers on. And we are gonna fish with small crankbaits and swim baits. I'm really tempted to use a 25 centimeter roach as well because it's such a successful lure for me all year round but the creeks and the canals that we're fishing in today are super shallow and they're also not that wide so we have to maneuver through a lot of obstacles and see how far we can go in certain situations but I'm excited um, this is something completely different than we normally do uh, we are in a small rubber boat combined with a small electric engine we don't even have a sounder so um, we're just gonna try and rely on our basic knowledge and see if we can catch a couple of pike and uh, well, we'll see what other surprises might come on board. But um, I'm excited, so let's go. So we are stuck on a chair, I think, and also a big fucking log with Anyone in need of a new chair? <laughs> Someone was using preservatives. That doesn't look good. Fishing it on a new SD4 rod with a small Citrix reel. Um, this SD4 rod has a casting weight up to 20 grams. It's a small bait caster. Works really well on these small crankbaits. Um, I'm not fishing it too far behind the boat because I need to make it run really shallow. So I think probably four to five meters behind the boat, which for some people that live abroad and live in like really remote areas, that might sound a bit strange that you fish that close to the boat. But in the Netherlands, pike don't seem to be spooked by boats at all. Uh, they're used to a lot of traffic in these canals. Um, and actually they make advantage of the turbulence in the water. Bait fish get into trouble, they get disorientated and then uh, pike, you know, adjust to the situation and see if there's a bait fish flapping around, uh, being in trouble in the turbulence and then they just snatch that fish straight out the surface. So I'm running the coin bait like 20 or 30 centimeters below the surface. I have my rod tip up high like this and yeah I just missed the first fish. Unfortunately it got away. I'm also using a one millimeter fluorocarbon trace with a small knot which I can just open up and adjust if I want to change the crankbait. But so far I'm feeling confident about this crankbait and I'll keep fishing with this small gravity crank. The 
wheels widening now a bit more I've been using the 25 centimeter roads in the shallow version but it's um, it sinks a bit too fast for my liking and also it, 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 it seems to be swimming a bit too erratic for the situation at hand today I'm going to switch to a smaller pulse tail also because the pike that we expect in this small water system are not meter plus pike, usually like 60 to 70 centimeters. I'm fishing it with the Savage Gear Power Game, new SC4 rod. It is 259 centimeters long. The extra length from this rod gives me a benefit in this wider canal so we can spread out our lures a bit more and uh, see what they're targeting today because the crankbaits we had two takes so far. Uh, Franz missed one, I missed one, but the 25cm uh, roach, they didn't seem to like it today, so I'm going to switch to the pulse tail. Ooh. Gravity crank completely inhaled. In someone's backyard. Yeah, urban fishing. Underneath the bridge over there. I just saw that bridge and I'm like, yeah, let's give it a go. And Try to go underneath it. Look at how we completely inhaled it. So what I'm doing now, I unhooked the fish through its gills because it was quite deep with the uh, gravity crank. So to make my life easier and that of the pike, I'm just gonna cut the fluorocarbon like that. Get the leader out. There you go. Thing in my hands. Yeah, you can go, buddy. You can go. Yes. Yeah. Ah. we got a problem. <laughs> It is so shallow that we completely stopped. Um, you wouldn't think it's shallow. <laughs> oh, smell. Oh, gee. <laughs> smell that muck. <laughs> oh, we're completely stuck, so hopefully. But um, it was stuck in the mud somewhere because it was like 20 centimeters deep. That's one of the downsides of not having a sonar. It's really back to basic. At the same time, it um, opens up a lot of possibilities to put a boat in, in water systems like this. We actually never been here before. Like, I think it's in the past. Frost fished here a lot as well. You said it might have been closed off or something. So, yeah, we're just exploring with, again, one rod in our hands and. Yeah, we'll see where this water system takes us. It's, um, it feels quite pristine like this. Not much fishing pressure going on here. We've got like one hour of daylight left, so I'm just gonna scout around and see what we can find. Hopefully catch another fish, but it truly is something uh, It opens up a lot of possibilities to fish with a small boat like this. Way different than sitting out on those big open lakes with the wind, you know chilling you to the bone and also in really really shitty conditions you can just escape towards these uh, remote places where nobody else fishes and who knows what kind of secrets these places uh, are hiding even though we only caught one fish uh, I had a great time I have to say hopefully we can catch another one or two maybe another one for France as well but uh, so far it's been a success if you would ask me okay, this is a dead end can't get anywhere here Slowly backing up the boat. I need to head back because it's getting darker and darker. And also, we have a night curfew in the Netherlands. We don't want to get shot on sight, so we need to get back home soon. Ah, 
2021. Uh, we're gonna troll back a bit. Living on the edge. What <laughs> We had a bike missing the lure twice in the surface. Oh, yeah. get it, get it. <laughs> what an amazing day even though the pike weren't too fussed about snatching our lures we had a blast exploring new and inaccessible locations with a smaller boat less equipment to worry about and most of all catching pike on light tackle that my man this is a successful ending of the day yeah it was awesome we will keep exploring these forgotten waters during the winter months and who knows maybe even beyond Thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you guys in the next video.